Starts with D and ends with T. That's Dress, the greatest suds discovery in 2,000 years. Dress brings you the life of Riley. Dress, D-R-E-S-T. Dress, Procter & Gamble's sudsing miracle for washing silks, woolens, nylons, dishes, presents The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Chester A. Riley prides himself on being a man of his word, especially when it comes to guiding his two children along the paths of proper discipline. But making sweeping statements is one thing. Living up to them is another. For instance, the other day... Honest, Riley, I can't do a thing with that boy. You'll just have to talk to him. He's getting more and more impossible every day. Peg, what are you getting excited about? Junior's a good boy. It's not right his own mother making him out to be a monster or something. Well, why shouldn't I get excited? Look what he's done. He tore up one of my best sheets again. What? Why, that little monster. <laughs> and this is the third time he's ripped up one of my sheets. He makes bandages so he can practice first aid with his boy scout troop. Oh, so that's it. I've been wondering where my shirt tails have been disappearing to. <laughs> but just look at this sheet. Now, you'll have to have a talk with him. No, no, talking don't help. I told him last time if he ever did a thing like this again, he'd get the licking of his life. And now he's going to get it. Uh, a licking? Yes. Yeah. N- now, now, wait, Roddy. Remember, Junior's a big boy now. Don't worry, I can defend myself. <laughs> Riley, after all, it's only a sheep. That ain't the point. The point is, he disobeyed me. He's got to learn to have respect for my words. Well, I know, but can't we just stop his allowance for a while? No, that won't do no good. I already owe him five weeks. <laughs> I said he's going to get a licking if he does it now, again. Now, wait a minute, Riley. You're a little excited. Now, Peg, no arguments. I know how to bring up my own son. Well, he's my boy as much as yours. Okay, I'll only lick my head. <laughs> But he's going to cry with your head. <laughs> Junior has got to learn once and for all. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe a little spanking will do him good. Well, I'm glad you agree with me, Peg. After all, parents like us have got a duty to their children. Where is he? In his room. Riley, what are you doing? He's taking off my belt. Your, your belt? Oh, no. No, it's the only way. But a belt. Well, I, I know, Peg. I feel the same way. This is one of the worst features of being a parent, but it's got to be done. Oh, I guess you're right. Okay. Here's the belt. Go and do it. <laughs> Why, I, I will not. This spanking is your idea. It is not. It was my father's idea. <laughs> I'm only passing it along. Now, Peg, this is no time to get soft-hearted. You've got to be strong. You spank him. I'll cook dinner. I knew it. You like to talk big, but when it comes to Junior, you're just a softy. Who's a softy? I know how to bring up a kid as well as the next guy. <laughs> oh, Riley, you're such a windbag. Oh, I am, am I? <laughs> okay, give me that belt. I'll show you. Oh, now, now, wait, I'll Riley. show you I'm the kind of a man when I say something, I mean it. I don't blow hot one minute and cold the next. I only blow one way. <laughs> So don't you call me no windbag. Now listen, Junior. I told you if you tore up one of your mother's sheets again, I'd give you a licking, didn't I? Yeah. Then why did you do it? Well, I didn't think. You didn't think. I ain't going to take that excuse from you. They don't take it from me. Why should I take it from you? (laughs) Oh, well, gee, Papa, I know I shouldn't have done it, but... Well, we needed bandages to practice for our first aid badge, and, and Walleye Simpson said it was my turn to get them, so... So you I... tore up your mother's best sheet. If you needed bandages so bad, why didn't you take the allowance I give you and buy them in the drugstore? Well, the drugstore won't take IOUs. <laughs> That's no excuse. Junior, you've got to be taught a lesson. Now, don't argue. You won't get out of it that way. I ain't a softy. Come on, bend over. Okay, Pop. Uh... Wait a minute, I'm giving you your last chance. Give me a good excuse why I shouldn't thank you. Well, I can't. Okay, that settles it. No more talk. Bend over. I'm bending over. Uh, wait a minute, I'm giving you your last chance. <laughs> Just give me one good excuse. 
I haven't got one. Okay, that settles it. You're getting a licking. Bend over. All right, go ahead. Don't rush me. <laughs> Junior, I'm giving you your last chance. All I want is one little excuse. Come on, Junior, cooperate. Well, I told you I didn't think. Okay, that settles it. This is the end. Come on, end over. I mean, <laughs> bend over. Hurry up, Pa. Don't tell me what to do. You've got to be taught a lesson, Junior. Uh, well, I might as well get it over with. Uh, well, why don't you say something? What do you want me to say? Anything, son, as long as you make me mad. <laughs> I haven't got anything to say. Well, okay, this time you talked me out of it. <laughs> but next time, watch out. You're not going to spank me, Pop? No, but don't think it's because I'm a softy. I just don't want to hurt my hands. In case I ever decide to take harp lessons. <laughs> oh, uh, well, thanks anyway, Pop. Boy, you're topped with me. Okay, son, as long as you know you did wrong. But from now on, lay off your mother's sheets, will you? Oh, sure, Pop. Hey, uh, can I go now? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Junior. Yeah, your mother's out there, and, uh, well, you you got to do me a little favor. Anything you say, pal. Well, you, you see, I told your mother I was going to lick you, and if I don't, well, you see, I'm really the boss in this house. Of course you're the boss. Don't let your mother hear you. <laughs> what I mean is, uh, this is sort of husband and wife politics. You'll understand better when you're married. But I want your mother to think I licked you, so I'll hit the desk here with my belt and you yell, trying to laugh, okay? Oh, sure, that's easy. Uh, you ready? <clears throat> I'm sorry, Junior. You've got to be taught a lesson. Take that! Come on, Junior, yell. Ow! Ow! Oh, please don't hit me. Ow! And take that! Ow! And that! Ow! I'll show you who's for. Take that! Ow! Oh, you're killing me! <laughs> Junior, don't overdo it. <laughs> Take that! Ow! Oh, hell! Riley! Hell. Riley, what are you doing in there? Ow. Open this door Ow. and let me in there. When Stop I it. say a thing, Ow. Peg, I mean it. She's falling for it, Junior. Keep it up. <laughs> Take that! And Ow. that! Oh. And that! Oh, please don't hit me. Ow! Hell! Yes, sir, Brother Gillis. Cozy little shack you got here. Truly livable. Oh, thanks, Brother Dickens. Right next door to Brother Riley's Jake. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're lucky to live alongside of a fellow member of the BPLA. Oh, yes, sir. And there ain't a better member than Riley in the Brooklyn Patriots of Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, speaking of Riley, that's one of the things I want to converse to you about. Oh, fine, Brother Muley. Converse away. Well, uh, you see, uh, uh, say, do you hear any noises? Noises? Nope. Can't say that I do. Hmm. Well, as I was saying, the executive board of the lodge is thinking of appointing Riley as chairman of one of our new committees. Oh, you couldn't get a better man for the job. You know, our friend Riley's a man who loves children, Help! and I think we should put him on the child welfare committee. Uh, are you sure you didn't hear nothing? Oh, sure. I heard every word you said. You know, <laughs> I think you've got a good idea there. Riley understands children. He's sweet and kind. Help! Uh, pardon me, Brother Muley. I think I do hear something. Let me open up the window. Ow! 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 Oh, Papa, don't hit me. Please don't hit me anymore. Oh, Ow! so that's the noise. Ow! It's just some neighbor beating the daylights out of his kid. <laughs> oh. You know, uh, after more and over your suggestion, Muley, I think Riley will make a gorgeous chill. I'd press my own kids with him. You know. uh. What neighbor was you referring to just before? Why, my next door neighbor. You see, on my right, there's Riley, and on my left, I got... On your left, you got an empty lot. You mean that yellow was... Oh, no. It can't be Riley and his kid. It's a cinch. It ain't a gopher beating up on a kid gopher. <laughs> no, it can't be. And that... Help! You're murdering me! Listen to that. He's beating this kid all right. Beating him? He's manslaughtering him. Well, come on, Gillis. Let's get over there before it's too late. Help! Okay, Junior. Help! Okay, Junior. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's enough. Here. Here's a dime for your trouble. Oh, thanks, Bob. Riley, if you don't open this door... It's okay, I'm... Peg. I'm all through now. He's learned his lesson. Junior, 
Junior, I'll go out first, and then you come out. And uh, uh, remember, groan a little when you come out. Make it look good, yes? Yeah? Oh, okay, Pop. Riley, are I'm you... I'm coming. Riley, are you out of your mind? What did you do to Junior? I'm a man of my word, Peg. I said I'd lick him, and I'd done it. Oh, let me in there. I want to see my poor baby. Well, the... <laughs> I sure put one over on her. <laughs> Oh, hello, Brother Lodge Brothers. Come in. You bet we're coming. Riley, how could you? Well, how could I what? Don't deny it. We heard the poor kid screaming. You ain't human. You're a monster. An inhuman plank for that. <laughs> but, uh... oh, 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 no. You don't understand, fellas. I wasn't beating the kid. Honest. He's okay. He's right in here. I'll show you. Oh, Junior. How could you beat the poor boy the way you did? Uh, but, 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 Peg, I... You ought to be ashamed of yourself. So, oh, the kid's okay, huh? Come on, you No, no, wait, fellas. Listen, Junior, say something. Oh! That's all, Riley. <laughs> Come on, Brother Dakin. Let's get out from this... This chain gang he's running here. What a revolting development this is. <laughs> Draft will bring you the second act of the life of Riley in a moment. Say, folks, have you joined the march to draft? Well, let's go. Ready? Dress. Dress. Dress your dishes and oh, how they shine. Shine without wiping in half of the time and look bright. Right. So don't you get left, get dressed. Yes, everybody's marching to the store for dress. The greatest suds discovery in 2,000 years. Dress, Parker and Gamble's sudsing miracle that gets dishes so clean, they shine even without wiping. Here's why dress works such dishwashing miracles. Dress is a wonderful new kind of suds, different from any soap you ever use. You know how all soaps leave cloudy streaks on dishes unless you polish them. Well, dress suds rinse clear. Leave dishes so clean they sparkle, towel or no towel. Yes, and you like the way grease just disappears like magic. Dress gets rid of dishpan grease the way no soap in the world can do. Dress kind of hands, too. So no wonder millions of women from coast to coast are changing to dress. Get dressed yourself first thing Monday. Remember, dress carries the famous Procter & Gamble name on every package. It can't be duplicated at any price. So don't get left. Get dressed. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. After vowing to lick his son, Junior, to discipline him, Riley at the last moment got chicken-hearted and couldn't go through with it. In order to save face with his wife, he only pretended to spank the boy. But two of his large brothers heard Junior's fake screams and now believe that Riley is an inhuman father. To make matters worse, Peg is of the same opinion. But, something? let me talk. Nothing I... you say can excuse what you've done. Beating a defenseless boy. Discipline is one thing, but... You only listen to me for... Junior, say something. Oh, 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 oh. That's enough already. Stop back and tell your mother what happened. Oh, it's okay? Yes, yes, for heaven's sake, tell her. Oh, well, Pop only pretended to hit me, Mom. What? Well, sure, he was just hitting the desk and I made out I was hurt. Pop just wanted to fool you. Chester Riley, you didn't beat him. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Peg. Remember, you How just... How could said... you play a trick like that on me? Why, it sounded like you were murdering him. Now, Peg, you know I would never murder Junior without your permission. <laughs> I mean... What I... did you hope to accomplish by a stunt like that? Well, I... I only wanted to prove that I was the boss in my own house. Well, did you? No, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, I... I... I can't be angry with you. When are you going to grow up? Well, give me a chance, Dumplin'. I'm only 39. <laughs> After all, I, I, I'll get it. Hello? Yeah. When? Right away. Well, what's it about? Violating the Constitution. I'll be right over. Well, what's the matter, Riley? Emergency meeting of the Supreme Council of the Lodge. Trouble. What's happened, Pop? I don't know the details yet, but some no-good beast is going to get thrown out of the lodge. (laughs) 
And they want me to be there when it happens. Order, order, order. Brothers of the Supreme Council, we have now heard all the evidence against the defendant Riley on the charge of violating Section 49. To wit, action in a manner inconsistent with the dignity and social responsibility of the human being. Or in other words, slugging your kids slap happy. <laughs> Are you ready to pass judgment? Yeah, 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 we're ready. If it pleases the court, I would like to say something. The chair recognizes Brother Goldberg. Thank you, I recognize the chair. <laughs> have no bearing on the case, but we ain't heard yet from Riley. Ah, who wants to hear from Riley? This court don't want to get its mind confused by hearing two sides to a story. <laughs> well, I ain't standing up for Riley, understand? But we got to keep an open mind. Instead of voting him guilty without a trial, I move we hear his lying story and then vote him guilty. <laughs> I second the motion. Hey, fellas, what goes on? What, what's the big idea of starting a meeting without me? Order in a court. The charge is violating the Constitution. We are about to dish out a verdict. Oh, well, that's okay with me as long as I got here in time to toss that weasel out on his ear. It has been suggested that before voting, we give the accursed a chance to defend himself. <laughs> no, no. Nothing to him. Any member who'd violate the Constitution don't deserve no hearing. I vote we give him the bum's rush. Take a vote, Mr. Chairman. All in favor, we should throw Riley out of the lodge. Say aye. Aye! Aye! <laughs> Them opposed? Nobody! Throw him out! Where is he? Come on, Riley, show your miserable face. Stand up and sit. You can do Riley. Did you say Riley? Correct. But I'm the only Riley in the lodge. <laughs> You're the only Riley who used to be in the lodge. Well, what are you saying? I'm a charter member. Who painted the no gambling sign with his own hand? <laughs> Me. Who got us the slot machine wholesale? <laughs> Me. Give me a break. Tell me what I did. We heard what you did. You beat that poor kid of yours and killed Oh, no, the... no. I told you that was a mistake. I didn't do it. Why, I love that boy like my own son. <laughs> Gillis, Gillis, tell him. Julie and me heard the poor kid moaning and groaning. He could hardly stand up. There was two pink, big purple whelks, an inch wide, running down his back. Those were the suspenders I gave him for Christmas. <laughs> Honest, I didn't hit him. Listen, send a committee over to my house and I'll prove it. If you find one mark on him, I'll resign from the lodge. You will? I'll go further than that. I'll resign as his father. Hey, take it easy with that bandage while I... You're choking me. I know what I'm doing, Junior. I've been practicing first aid a long time. Now lie down. Yeah, well, go easy. I'm doing it just the way it says in the scout manual. Whenever there's a suspicion of a fractured jaw... Yeah, all right, all right. Get finished. My neck's getting stiff. I just have to put on the adhesive tape. Hey, do I have to keep my arm in the sling? Sure, you're supposed to have a possible broken arm, too. Yeah, well, hurry up, will you? I uh, uh, what are you doing? Well, I gotta put the adhesive tape on, don't I? Oh, oh heck, I ran out of adhesive. You wait here, I'll go over to my house and get some. Oh, no, no, you're not supposed to move. Just lie there till I get back. Okay, fellas, now I'll show you. Junior, you'll see you were all wrong. I hope so, Riley, for your sake. Uh, you'll see. Oh, Junior. Uh, he's probably in his room here. Hey, kid, you on the bed there. Have you seen Jun <laughs> Junior? Oh, so there ain't a mark on him, huh? Look at that arm, that neck, that jaw. But I didn't do that. Not by yourself. You must have had Boris Karloff to help. <laughs> Come on, Ike. We've seen the evidence. Junior, what happened? Don't lie there like a dummy. Tell him. <laughs> oh, the poor kid. He ain't got enough teeth left to talk with. <laughs> Come on, I... No, please, wait. I'll take the bandage off and step aside, ex-brother. Oh, what a mess. 
I'm so ashamed. I wish I could go someplace and just drop out of sight. I know just the place. <laughs> Who's that? It is I, Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> Oh, it's you, Digger. Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> Digger, I'm in trouble. I'm a social outcast. All my friends have crossed me off their list. Cheer up. You're still on my list. <laughs> they kicked me out of my lodge. Oh, I know how you feel. Once I was kicked out of a club, the UEPUS. The U-E-T-U-S. Yes, the undertakers, embalmers, and fallbearers uplift society. <laughs> they expelled me for reading a book that we had banned. Uh, what book was that? Bring them back alive. <laughs> well, this wasn't my fault, Digger. You see, I gave my boy a beating. You did? Oh, for shame. Well, I didn't really beat him. Come, come, Riley. Did you or didn't you? Well, I did and I didn't, you see. Riley, if you expect me to help you, I must have the facts. In our profession, we have a saying. Before you can straighten the man out, you've got to pit him down. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I pretended to beat him and he just pretended to yell, but the lodge got the wrong idea. Oh, I see. Riley, you made a grave mistake. Mistakes can be disastrous. I know. Take the case of my friend Max, whose epitaph reads, Here lies Max, a lumberjack, who climbed out on a limb to hack it. He forgot he was sitting on the limb he was splitting. Now he's wearing a lumber jacket. <laughs> I don't know what to do, Digger. Oh, nonsense. It's very simple. If Junior is unharmed, prove it to your large brother. Show them the lad, alive and kicking. Then they'll clear your name. Well, I've tried that once and it didn't work, but, but this time I'll see to it that nothing goes wrong. Oh, thanks, Digger. You've added ten years to my life. Hmm. <laughs> well, cheerio. I'd better be shoveling off. Hello, Coach Jenkins. This is Junior Riley's father. I've been phoning all over town for my boy. Is he there? Yes, but he's practicing pole vaulting. Listen, Coach, tell him to come down to my lodge right away. It's a matter of life and death. All right, Mr. Riley, right away. Thanks. Goodbye. Listen, brothers. we got to start the meeting, Riley. Oh, but I just located Junior. He'll be here any minute. Oh, you saw long enough. Write out your resignation. Here's a pencil. Lick it and start writing. Yeah, come on. Okay. That's the way you feel about it, I'll quit. What do I care? Why did I ever get out of this lodge anyway? Shoot pool three nights a week. Play poker with you every Saturday night. Go bowling every Sunday afternoon. Go to the fight with you every Friday. Listen, fellas, you've got to take me back. <laughs> I can't live without you. Please have mercy. Well, okay. One thing we got is mercy. You got five minutes. Junior. Hey, Junior Riley. Where's Junior Riley? Here I am, Coach, on the bench. Oh, listen, Junior, your father wants you down at his lodge right away. Oh, I bet I know what it is. I'll go down right away. Oh! Hey, wait a minute. You're oh. limping. What? I just twisted my ankle in the last jump. Let me see it. Hmm, bad swelling. You better stay off that ankle. Don't put any weight on it for 24 hours, you hear? Oh, but, Coach, I got to get down to that lodge. My father's in a spot. Well, you can't walk. Wait a minute. I know what. Oh, Jake, get out of my office and get those crutches. Well, Riley, your time's up. The kid ain't show. Yeah, we can't stay here all night. No, well, wait, fellas. He's on his way, I tell you. You've got to boot. That must be him. Junior, is that you? Yeah, it's me, Pa. Well, come in, son. Well, open the door for me. Uh, now I'm through talking, fellas. Now you'll see for yourself the boy's in perfect shape. Come in, son. Well, boys, look him over. Didn't I... <laughs> Junior, 
Junior. What are you doing with them hockey sticks? <laughs> oh, they're crutches, Pop. Junior. Oh, my poor boy, what happened to you? Oh, stop putting on an act. You know what happened, you beast. No. No, you... You see, I, I didn't do it. Junior and I only... If he hadn't torn the sheet... Oh, what's the use? I'm guilty. I'm guilty. You hear? G-I-L-T-Y. Yeah. <laughs> Rallies will return in a moment. Are you uh, joining the Easter Parade tomorrow, ladies? Well, here's a friendly tip. To help keep your frilly new Easter blouse, pretty new lingerie, and sheer nylons looking as lovely as they do now, use Dress. Yes, Dress offers brighter, fresher, safer cleaning than any suds before in history. Why take stockings? Nightly Dress washing will make them look lovelier and wear longer than with even expensive soap flakes. As for under things, my Dress Gentle Suds keep the colors sparkling bright washing after washing. Your new sweaters, too. Dress will wash them softer and fluffier than you ever dreamed possible. You see, dress never leaves a dulling soap deposit in fabrics the way all soaps do. Dress suds rinse clear, leave colors sparkling. So to help keep your nice washables lovely and new looking, use dress. Don't get less, get dress. after you said you were guilty. Well, then Junior spoke up and they took me back in the lodge. Then they finally believed your story. Uh, no, no, they didn't. Well, then, why did they take you back? Well, they said any kid who'd lie for his father the way Junior did must love him, so there must be some good in me. <laughs> oh, Riley, how do you get into these jams? Believe me, Peg, it's not easy. <laughs> Dr. and Gamble, makers of dress, the sudsing miracle for soaps, nylons, woolen fishes, invite you to be their guest next week to hear The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker and is directed by Don Bernard. Music by Lou Koslow. The script by Alan Lipscott and Reuben Schiff. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow, Digger Odell is John Brown, Junior is Tommy Cook, Muley is Dick Ryan, Walleye is Gil Stratton, and Julius is Benny Baker. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to listen again next week to The Life of Riley. And reminding you for faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any suds before in history, use dress. Don't get less, get dress. Not 50, not 75, but 100 percent. Yes, it's 100 percent true. Dream reveals all your hair's natural luster, removes all dulling soap film. For Dream is not a soap shampoo, leaves no dull film, as all soaps do. For brilliant glamour, you see what we mean. Cause your hair can have that dazzling sheen. The very first time that you use Dream. Never before Dream could any shampoo leave hair so lustrous, yet so easy to manage. Listen again next week when Dress, the subject miracle for soap, nylons, woolen dishes, brings you the life of Riley. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.